Okay, here is the module two quiz two. Um, I expect you guys to take notes um, and be able to follow along with this and, and duplicate it when you're asked to retake the quiz. Okay, so numbers one and two were pretty straightforward. Okay, now when you look at number one, it says draw a diagram to represent the area of the square. Well, you know you have three squares. I'm probably going to run out of room here, right? And you have 1x squared in each, but then if I take 24x and I divide it by 3, that means I'm going to have 8 rectangles in each one. But when I divide that by 2, right, I'm going to have 4 on each side. Now, how many will I have in here? 16. So you would have three of these squares. And I'm not going to draw all three, but all three of them should look like this. Now the next one's even easier. They're basically telling you have a square and you extended each side by three units. One, two, three. One, two, three. And if you look in this box, now you have nine. Okay. <clears throat> Now, the next one, it says, given the scramble diagram, write two equivalent equations for the area. Well, the first one is just counting up everything you have here. So these each are x squared. How many of them do I have? 2x squared. Then I have, remember, these are 1 by x's. So each of these represent an x. How many of these do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12. So plus 12 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, plus 11. <clears throat> now, it's equivalent expression. I can complete the square, or I can put the diagrams together, right? If I complete the square, I'm going to break it up into two squares. Each square is going to have six rectangles and one x squared. So x squared plus 6x. And I have the 11 little ones on the outside. But what you have to remember is <clears throat> I'm going to take half of 6 and square it, which gives me 3 squared, which is 9. Now, I added 9 here. But if I think about it, how many do I have to subtract? 18. Okay? So the equivalent expression is 2 times x plus 3 all squared minus 7. Okay? So now, the next one, example 4. How do we find C? Remember, if there's no number in front of x squared, C is basically half of B all squared. So if B is 22, what is half of that? 11. And 11 squared is 121. So all you have to do is take half of b and square it. Now, with this one, a lot of students made the mistake of just taking half of 28 and squaring it. But you got to remember, you have a number in front here. So we have to divide this up into 7 squares. So, how many x squareds am I going to have in each? 1. All right. Easy way to find out what goes inside is divide these by 7. So, how many x's is each going to get? 4. So now, it, since it's not a perfect square, I have to go and complete this square on this. Well, what do I do? I add. What am I going to add in? Well, now I'm going to take half of 4. That's the number I use. Half of 4 and square it, which gives me 2, and 2 squared is 4. So what you have to understand is, what is this number going to be? Well, if I distribute this 7 back out, 7 times 4 is 28. <clears throat> okay. Example 5. What you have to see here, guys, is each of these, it tells you write an equivalent expression in factored form. And what factored form means is kind of like this form, right? For each perfect square. So for these, you're not going to have any numbers on the outside. 
So all I had to do for these, remember, if I take half of B here and square it, does it pass the test? Well, 12 squared is 144. So right away, this just factors to X plus 12 all squared, right? I'm telling you these, this is a perfect square. So you should know it's just going to be X minus what is negative 60 divided by 2, negative 30. So it's X minus 30 all squared. These are perfect squares. Now this one's a little more difficult. If this should be 72. I told you guys to change it, right? If I pull this out, 2 times X squared plus 12X plus 36. What this is, is now this is a perfect square. So I take half of 12 and notice what happens. 6 squared, doesn't that give me 36? Wow, perfect square. But now I, how many perfect squares do I have? 2 times x plus 6 all squared. Here, I told you again, these are perfect square. Well, if you remember, we said this is just going to be x plus, how do we find this number? Take half of b. That's just going to be 11 over 2. Leave it at that. If they tell you it's a perfect square, you know it's a perfect square. There will be no number on the outside. So, completing the square for these quadratic. <coughs> I know this isn't a perfect square because half of 18 is 9. 9 squared is not 12. So now this is where I have to do that grouping. Group the first two terms. x squared plus 18x plus some number. Okay. Now I still have that plus 12 on the outside. How do I find this number? I take half of this, so 18 divided by 2, all squared. That gives you 9 squared, which is 81. But you got to remember, if I add 81 here, on the outside I have to subtract 81. Now this is that perfect square. So it goes to the, you know, like the previous problems we just did. Well, that just factors out now to x plus, what's half of 18? 9 squared. And you can check that by x squared. 9 times 9 is 81. 9x and 9x will give you 18x. But then on the outside here, I'm going to do minus 69. <clears throat> and you are done. This is all you had to do here. Okay? The next one. Before I can do anything, I have to break it up into four squares. So I pull this four out, and I divide each of them by four. I'm going to leave that because I know it's not a perfect square. So what do I have here? X squared. How many X's? Six. So now I have to find something to add here. I have my plus 16 out the outside, and I know I'm going to have to subtract something. Now, how do I do this? Well, what number goes here? Half of 6 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. Now, right away here, I know it's going to be four times. This now becomes x plus 3, all squared. But what did I really add here? So since I have four squares and I added nine of these to each of them, 4 times 9 is 36. So on the outside here, I have to subtract 36, which gives me 20. Okay. All right. Number seven. <clears throat> Again, to find the vertex, we have to complete the square. So what I'm going to do here is group these two terms. X squared minus 14X. I know I have to add something. Then I'm going to have my plus nine, but then I'm going to have to subtract something. So. How do I find that number? Half of b all squared, which is going to give me negative 7 squared, which is 49. If I add 49 here, I subtract 49. So this in vertex form would be x minus 7 all squared. That is what, th we rewrite this 
as this. Now, <clears throat> 9 minus 49 is minus 40. Well, if I look here, the vertex now is just the opposite of what this is. What's the opposite of negative 7? 7, and then this. You don't take the opposite of that. Now, since you know your A is 1, right, because there's no number in front, since it's positive, we know it opens up, which means this is going to be a minimum. Okay? So this next problem, the difference between A and B, is A or B has a coefficient in front of x squared. So, again, we're going to group these two terms. So, 3 times, when I divide that by 3, I'm left with x squared, right? So, it's like that. Divide by that, I get 4x. But I know I'm going to be adding something because I have to complete the square here. And I have that plus 3 out here. But then I'm going to have to subtract whatever I add in here. Okay? Now, how do I find this number? It's half of b all squared. 2 squared is 4. But what you have to understand is I add three of these. 3 times 4 is 12 is what I added, so I have to subtract 12. So this vertex form would be 3 times x plus 2 all squared. Remember, this is that 4 divided by 2, right? Minus 9, because that 3 minus 12, right? That gives me minus 9. So right away, my vertex is the opposite of 2 is negative 2, then negative 9. And if I look, A is positive 3. Since A is positive, I know it opens up. Since it opens up, I know my vertex is a minimum. Okay? <clears throat> now this last one, in order to graph, what do we do? Right? I know this isn't a perfect square because half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16, it doesn't match up. So again, group the first two terms, x squared plus 8x, right? plus I'm going to add something, and then I'm going to go ahead and subtract the same thing. So 8 divided by 2 would give me 4, 4 squared is 16. Okay? So now I added 16 here, right? So what do I have to subtract? 16. Now what you guys have to remember, all of these problems, if I complete the square, the reason I added 16 here is so that this can factor out to give me x plus what is half of 8, right? This here is what goes here, x plus 4, all squared. Then 5 minus 16 is minus 11. So in order to graph, first thing we do, find the vertex, which is that opposite of 4 is negative 4, negative 11. <clears throat> negative 4, negative 11, right here. 1, 2, 3, oops, sorry, it's right here. Excuse me. Now, I had to do this kind of quickly, but now we jump to the 1a, 3a, 5a. 1a, 3a, 5a, where a is technically 1, right? So 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 5 times 1 is 5. So we now go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. 3, then over 1, up 5. Over 1, up 1. I'm going to go over again, up 3, over, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now I can duplicate it on the other side. Now, this would be your graph. So <clears throat> you're going to print off the remediation worksheet. And any problem you have to, you know, relook at or you don't understand, forward this video to that type of problem, watch it, and duplicate your steps on that problem. I really hope this helps. And remember, the retake is on Wednesday. Thank you.